In this video, we're going to focus on solving linear equations with variables on both sides, fractions, decimals. But let's start with the basics. Let's say if we have the equation x plus 4 is equal to 7. How can we solve for x? So keep in mind, x is simply a number. It's a number that you currently don't know the value of. What number plus 4 is 7? We know that 3 plus 4 is 7. Therefore, x is equal to 3. But now, what process must we use to solve for x? Whenever you want to solve for x, you need to get x on one side of the equation by itself. So you need to move the 4 from the left side to the right side. Notice that the x and the 4 are separated by addition. The opposite of addition is subtraction. So you need to subtract both sides by 4. 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. Therefore, x is 3. Let's try this one. x minus 3 is equal to 9. So what should we do to solve for x? We need to do the opposite of what we see. Since we see a negative 3 on the left side, let's add 3 to both sides. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, so those two numbers will cancel. And 9 plus 3, to add them, if you put 9 on the number line, whenever you need to add, travel 3 units to the right. 1, 2, 3. So 9 plus 3 is 12. Therefore, x is equal to 12. Try this one. 5 minus x is equal to 12. So what's the first thing that you would recommend that we should do? We need to move the 5 from the left side to the right side. So let's subtract both sides by 5. So negative x is equal to 12 minus 5, which is 7. So negative x is the same as negative 1x. So what can we do to solve for x at this point? If we divide both sides by negative 1, we're going to have positive x, or simply x on the left side. Positive 7 divided by negative 1. Whenever you divide a positive number by a negative number, you're going to get a negative number, so this is negative 7. So x is equal to negative 7. And we could check it. To see if you have the correct answer, plug it back in. If we replace x with negative 7, we could see that 5 minus negative 7 is the same as 5 plus 7. Whenever you have two negative signs next to each other, it changes and becomes a positive sign. 5 plus 7 is 12, and 12 equals 12, so the equation is true, which means that x is indeed negative 7. Try this one. 3x equals 12. What is the value of x? So what this equation is really saying, 3 times what number is equivalent to 12? We know that 3 times 4 is 12. Therefore, x is equal to 4. But how can we show work? So since the 3 is multiplied by the x to separate the 3 from the x, you need to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we need to divide both sides by 3. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. Try this one. 7x equals 14. So just like the other problem, we need to divide both sides by 7. On the left side, 7 divided by 7 is 1. So we simply get 1x on the left side. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Therefore, x is equal to 2. If you plug it back in, 7 times 2 is 14. So it works. Now, what if you were to get an equation that looks like this? x divided by 3 is 8. What do we need to do to get x by itself? How can we solve for it? The opposite of division is multiplication. So we need to multiply both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so those numbers will cancel. 8 times 3 is 24. And that's all you need to do for that problem. Now what about a fraction? Let's say if you have 2 thirds x is equal to 9. How would you solve for x in this case? 
Well, let's take it one step at a time. Let's multiply both sides by 3. So these 3's will cancel. On the left side, we have 2x. On the right side, 9 times 3 is 27. And then we could divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we have x on the left side. And on the right side, the answer is 27 over 2. If you want to convert 27 over 2 into a decimal, you can break it down to 26 over 2 plus 1 over 2, since 26 plus 1 is 27. 26 divided by 2 is 13, and 1 half is basically 0.5. So 27 over 2 is 13.5 as a decimal. Now, how would you solve this one? 5 over 4x is equal to 3 over 7. 5 over 4 times x is the same as 5x over 4. You can view x as x over 1. The right side is going to stay the same. Whenever you have two fractions separated by an equal sign, you can cross multiply. 4 times 3 is 12, and 5x times 7 is 35x. So now to isolate x, we could divide both sides by 35. So the answer is 12 over 35. Now let's work on a few multi-step problems. If we have this equation, 2x minus 1 is equal to 9, what do we need to do to solve for x? Should we divide by 2 or should we add 1 to both sides? You want to add 1 to both sides. It's easier if you do it that way. 9 plus 1 is 10. At this point, you want to divide. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And so the answer is that. Try this one. Go ahead and solve for x. So just like in the last problem, we're going to subtract both sides first. 20 minus 8 is 12. And then, towards the end, we could separate the 3 from the x by dividing both sides by 3. So x, which is 12 divided by 3, is 4. And so that's the answer. Now, what do we need to do if we have a parenthesis in the equation? Now, you have options. You can distribute the 3, or you can subtract both sides by 7. It really doesn't matter. But I'm going to subtract both sides by 7. So 3 times x minus 2 is equal to 9. Now at this point, I could distribute the 3, but I think there's going to be more work if I do it that way. I can also divide both sides by 3, since the 3 is multiplied to the x minus 2. These will cancel. Since I no longer have a number in front of the parentheses, I don't need the parentheses anymore. So it's simply x minus 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now the last thing I need to do is add 2 to both sides. 3 plus 2 is 5. And so that's the answer for this particular problem. x is equal to 5. Let's try another one. Feel free to pause the video and go ahead and work on this problem. When you're ready, unpause it and see what the answer is. So what do you think should be our first step in this problem? In this problem, let's go ahead and distribute the 2 and the 3. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is 6. On the right side, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. On the left side, I'm going to add like terms. That's the 6 and the 8. 6x, I mean 6 plus 8 is 14. And on the right side, we can add negative 3 plus 15. Negative 3 plus 15 is the same as 15 minus 3, 
which is positive 12. So now, let's subtract both sides by 2x, and simultaneously, let's subtract both sides by 12. So these will cancel, and the same is true for that. 14 minus 12 is 2, 3x minus 2x is 1x, which is simply x. Therefore, x is equal to 2. Here's another one. 2 over 3x plus 1 over 4 is equal to 5. What should we do if we need to solve a linear equation that contains fractions? What you want to do is you want to clear away all the fractions. So we need to multiply both sides by a number that is going to get rid of the 3 and the 4. So what is the least common multiple of 3 and 4? 3 and 4 can go into 12. 3 times 4 is 12. So let's multiply both sides by 12. So what's 12 times 2 over 3x? 2 over 3 times 12 is the same as 2 over 3 times 12 over 1. You can multiply first and then divide, or you can divide first then multiply. 2 times 12 is 24, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. However, 12 divided by 3 is also 4. 4 times 2 is 8. You get the same answer. So therefore, 2 thirds times 12 is going to be 8. So we have 8x. 12 times 1 fourth is the same as 12 divided by 4. So that's going to be 3. And 12 times 5. 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 2 is 10. 50 and 10 gives you 60. So 5 times 12 is 60. Now our next step, now that we cleared away all fractions, we need to subtract both sides by 3. 60 minus 3 is 57. At this point, we could divide both sides by 8. So the answer is 57 over 8. Let's try another problem like that. Try this one. 2. So how can we solve for x in this problem? So we need to multiply both sides by a number that can get rid of every denominator of each fraction. So we need to get rid of a 3, a 6, and a 5. What number can 3, 5, and 6 go into? This is 30. 6 times 5 is 30, and 3 can go into 30. So let's multiply everything by 30. So what's 30 times 1 over 6x? 30 divided by 6 is 5. So this is going to change to 5x. Now what about 30 times 2 thirds? 2 times 30 is 60. 60 divided by 3 is 20. Or we could say 30 divided by 3 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. Now what about 30 times 3 fifths? 30 divided by 5 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. So it's 18x. And what about 30 times 5 thirds? 30 divided by 3 is 10. 10 times 5 is 50. So now to solve for x, let's add 20 to both sides. So 5x is equal to 18x plus 50 plus 20, which is 70. And now let's subtract 18x from both sides. 5x minus 18x is negative 13x, which equals 70. So at this point, all we need to do is divide by negative 13. So x is equal to negative 70 over 13. And we'll leave the answer like that.
Now, what if you have an equation that contains decimals? What would you do to solve for x? The first thing you want to do is you want to convert the decimals into a whole number, or even an integer. So notice that for every decimal, we have only one number to the right of the decimal point. So we need to multiply everything only by 10. Whenever you multiply a number by 10, you just got to move the decimal point one unit to the right. 0.1 times 10 is 1, so we have 1x. 0.2 times 10 is 2. 0.5 times 10 is 5. 0.3 times 10 is 3. So now let's subtract both sides by x, and at the same time, let's add 3 to both sides. So 2 plus 3 is 5. 5x minus 1x is 4x. So now we just got to divide both sides by 4. So x is 5 over 4. Try this one. 0.24x plus 0.12 is equal to 0.36x minus 0 0.04. So this time we have two numbers to the right of the decimal point. So we need to multiply both sides by 100. And whenever you do that, you need to move the decimal point two units to the right. So 0.24 times 100 is the same as 24. So we have 24x. 0.12 times 100 is 12. 0.36 times 100 is 36. And 0 0.04 will change into 4. So let's add 4 to both sides. And let's take away 24x from both sides. 12 plus 4 is 16. 36 minus 24, that's 12. So to isolate x, we've got to divide both sides by 12. Therefore, x is equal to 16 over 12. Now, we can reduce the fraction. We can divide both numbers by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So x is 4 over 3. Now, let's say if you were to receive an equation that looks like this. How would you solve for x? In this situation, what you need to do is cross multiply. 5 times 5x minus 1. You need to distribute the 5 to the 5x and the negative 1. 5 times 5x is 25x. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And then we need to multiply 7 by 2x plus 3. 7 times 2x is 14x. And 7 times 3 is 21. So now we can solve it. Let's subtract both sides by 14x. And let's add 5 to both sides. 25x minus 14x, that's 11x. 21 plus 5 is 26. So since 11x is equal to 26, we can divide both sides by 11. And x is 26 over 11. So that's the answer. If you want to convert it to a mixed fraction, you can break down 26 into 22 over 11 plus 4 over 11, since 22 plus 4 is 26. 22 divided by 11 is 2, so as a mixed fraction, the answer is 2 and 4 elements.